The Toyota CHR, a strange car from a strange era of Toyota. Many journalists describe it as a bad car, a horrible car, but is it really that bad? Well, in today's video, we're going to do a thorough tour of the Toyota CHR, everything about it, and we're going to take you on a journey to find out if this is really as bad of a car as they say it is, or it's not, right after this. Let's look at the powertrain options of the CHR. Now, the thing is, in the US, we only had one engine and one transmission for the CHR. Everywhere else, we had many different options. In the US, we have the 3ZR FAE engine, 2.0 liter, four cylinder. This engine is actually not used in any other model sold in the US. This is the only car that uses this. Other markets, they do use it in other models. The transmission is a CVT transmission, the K114. It's also kind of a unique transmission, not really used in other models, very similar to the K313, which was used in many models in the US, like the Corolla from 14 and up. Other markets got many different engines for the CHR, and the CHR seems to be more focused for other markets. We just had it for just as a test. We'll get to that in a little bit down, down the road in the video. But other markets had the 1.2 liter 8NR turbo engine, four cylinder. They also had the M20A engine, which is the same as the Corolla Cross. They had a hybrid variant on the transmission side. They had a manual transmission. They had an eCVT. They had the new CVT with the first gear. There's even an EV variant of the CHR in China. But we never got any of that in the US. We just have one engine, one transmission, no all-wheel drive, because other markets in the world also got the all-wheel drive. We never did, so uh, interesting choice there. This powertrain is actually pretty simple, pretty similar to other models, because the 2.0 liter engine is very similar to the 1.8, which is used in the CHR and other models, but not in the US. But that same 1.8 2ZR engine is used in many other models in the US, and this is very, very similar to it. Same thing with the transmission. Same thing actually with the whole layout of the car. You lift this car up in the air, look underneath it. It looks very similar to most Toyota models, nothing really special or specific to the CHR. Let's look at the exterior of the Toyota CHR, but before we do that, if I would describe the CHR in one word, it would be strange. And that strangeness comes from the fact that this was supposed to be a Scion, believe it or not. It was designed, made, and it was ready to go as a Scion model, but then Scion decided to uh, depart us and this model just stayed in the air and they decided just to batch it as a Toyota and here we go. That's why the first year actually didn't have many options, didn't have many trims, just like many Scion models. Strange is the name of the game when it comes to Scions. But looking at the outside of the CHR, it is such a small crossover, SUV, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a car throughout the review. For such a small car, it has so much going on in the design. It is very interesting, actually. Starting from the front, you have these bulging arches, and then we go in the back, and things get really strange in the back. You have that big arch that is integrated in this body line that goes all the way from here, all the way to the top, and then the tail light create like a channel that goes to the back. There's a lot going on in the design of the outside for such a small car. And of course, the CHR, the general design language of the CHR is, it is like a crossover with a coupe look. That seems to be the fashion with some manufacturers, and this is very clear. The first time you lay eyes on the CHR, you would think it's a coupe, it only has two doors. The back of the CHR has such an interesting design. It's a very large panel on a tiny window, and it swoops up like that, and there's just too much going on with the design of the back door for something so small. Everything is extremely strange with the design and over the top. It almost feels like they spent more time on the design than anything else because for such a conservative company like Toyota, this is a pretty wild design. I mean, you look at places like just past the back door, there's this crease in the body that it's going to make it very difficult to repair, but it was so intentional. Typically, Toyota will make cars that are simple to manufacture, simple to repair, simple to put together. 
but not the CHR. There's just too much curves, too much body lines, too much design emphasis over simplicity and just ease of manufacturing. Then we look at the back of the CHR where the strangeness continues. Because of that coupe shape, the door handle is right here all the way up high. And then we have the triple spoiler because one spoiler was not enough. We needed three. There is the big spoiler here with openings through it. That's okay. This is, uh, we can live with that. But then there is a little mini spoiler here. And then if you really look close, there's actually a spoiler design built into the body. So the CHR has three spoilers because one is just not good enough. I don't know who uh, inspired that design. Thinking of one car. But otherwise, the back of the CHR is also strange. You have these bulges, like I told you, this body line that goes through the taillight, almost looks like a channel here. And then there's another bulge here, and then the bumper comes out. There's just too much going on in the design, but it does give it a character. It's something different, a departure from your typical, sensible, conservative car designs. Let's take a look at the interior where the strangeness goes into overdrive. First is the materials. Some of the materials and the things used in the CHR are actually unique to the CHR, at least from my experience looking at every single Toyota model every single day. First is the steering wheel. It's a one-off steering wheel with an interesting touch of piano black trim on it. That's a pretty cool looking steering wheel, not really found in any other Toyota model. The second thing is the gauges, specifically the needles and the color configuration. Not really found in any other Toyota model sold in the US. It's unique to the CHR. Then there is the material on top of the dash. It's a pretty soft, interesting looking material that you will not find in other Toyota models. Behind it is the typical material you will find in other Toyota models, but not the front part. It's a very soft, almost leather-like, it's not leather, but it's leather-like material, which is pretty cool. Then we move on to the next strange thing, which is uh, the theme of the CHR, the diamond shapes. There is more diamond shapes here. It almost feels like an obsession with the diamond shape and the CHR. First, you have on the headliner, you have a bunch of diamond shapes drops or whatever you want to call them. They're all over the, the headliner. But then you look closer and the HVAC buttons have the diamond shape. The steering wheel controls have the diamond shape. And then you start looking closer and closer. The buttons and the overhead console have a diamond shape. And then you look at the HVAC vents on the on the si either side of the dash. They have a diamond shape. And then even the door sills, even the little microphone hole that, that is in the overhead console, that also has a diamond shape. I guess uh, that is a theme that carries out through the CHR of the diamond shape. It's also on the seats, it's also on the door panels, on the speakers. It's everywhere. Everywhere you look, there is diamond shapes. And then the whole shape of the dash. It is facing the driver in a way that reminds me of the old Supra. But there is a giant bulge right here that kind of makes the passenger room cramped because all the dash comes out here to make everything to turn toward the driver. It is a little bit unnecessary, but that's just the design theme, is where you look at this car and think, they prioritize design over function almost in this car, both exterior and interior. And of course, the last but not least, something that you will use every single day that is different than other Toyota models, the shifter. The knob itself is different than other Toyota models. Moving on to the back of the CHR, space is okay, but it's not the greatest. Again, because of that slope of the roof, the space is a little bit cut. If this was a straight, kind of like a 90 degree turn, like most SUVs, it would have a lot more room. But because it's almost like a hatchback design where the, the back door is sloped this way, it drops some of your space. The back seats fold. It's a decent space, not the biggest space in the world, but again, this is a compact or subcompact. The strangeness here continues with, with accessories even. The cargo net is a pretty interesting uh, orientation, not your typical cargo net that stands here. It actually lays down on the floor of the, of the back. Underneath this is actually a spare tire, a compact spare tire, which is something interesting to see in such a small car and a very welcome thing. 
Let's talk about some things I don't actually like about the CHR, starting with the biggest one. There's no all-wheel drive model. Folks, this is a crossover and all its competitors have all-wheel drive options. And the worst thing is, there is an all-wheel drive CHR in other markets, but in the US, we don't have it. And that's kinda takes the advantage out of the CHR. And the other thing is, some of the design elements of the CHR interferes with its day-to-day -day functionality. Things like the massive blind spot because of that sloped back design, it robs from your blind spot. You look in the back, it's really hard to see out of. The other thing is the back door handle. Tested this with my eight-year-old. She walked up to the car. First, she didn't even know where the door handle was, which is fine, that's just the first time. But then she had a very hard time reaching it and opening it so if you have little kids and you're finally happy that they are independent they can open their own door sit down close the door they're gonna have a hard time with that high handle I wish the handle was just in a normal spot and if you are a car guy or a person with a heavy foot this thing will disappoint you it is slow but you know what for its intended purpose it is not hopelessly slow it's just slower than your average crossover, I suppose. And we're not even gonna talk about zero to 60 times. And if these are concerns of yours, you should not be looking at many models of this segment because they're all slow. That's just the way it is. And then there is the drive. Driving the CHR, it's okay. It's a little bit on the slow side, but it's very loud. Insulation wise, road noise wise, and engine wise. But again, remembering that this is a Scion, Scions didn't exactly have the quietest interiors and they were meant for younger generation. The younger generation usually will have the radio blasting. They can really care less about road noise and all that stuff. That's reserved for the older uh, folks like myself and others. Then there's the rear legroom, which could be an issue if you are tall or if your kids are taller, teenagers, whatever the case may be, this will be an issue. But if you have little kids or you have occasional passengers in the back, this will actually not be a very big issue. And last but not least is the seats, the front seats. I am not particularly happy with the bucket seat design. It's not very comfortable, at least for me. Again, I'm a bigger guy, maybe a skinnier person will sit there and not have a problem, or someone with no back problems like myself will not have issues, but I would not find the seat very comfortable in an hour, hour and a half drive. I can imagine if you drive four or five hours, it could be an issue. So if you're looking to buy one, that is something you really want to pay attention to. Are you comfortable in the front seat? So what is the final verdict on the CHR? Well, the CHR is a strange car from a strange brand that abandoned it before its introduction. And price-wise, when the CHR came out, it absolutely made no sense because for a very little more or almost the same, you could buy a base level RAV4, which is of course bigger and better. But as time progresses and as the RAV4 price rises and the CHR remains relatively similar, it actually starts to make sense. And in the market of the crossover and SUV craze, this is starting slowly to make more sense. And to answer the question that we started this video with, is this car as bad as some journalists say it is? Or is it actually not as bad? Well, this is when the typical review stops and I come in. My name is AMD. I work on these cars every single day. I have a career as a Toyota technician. Let me share with you the reality of the CHR. Everything else, you like the legroom, you like the design, is it fast, is it slow? That is entirely up to you. Everybody has an opinion about that. But when it comes to reliability, the CHR is actually an absolute hidden gem. And most people will say, well, wait a second, all Toyotas are generally reliable. So yeah, of course it's reliable. But actually I'm talking compared to other Toyota models. Typically when a new model comes out, you'll have a few issues here and there. Some of them are little, some of them are big, typically taken care of and life is great. But the CHR, when it came out, and I remember this one very clearly because I had the first one that came to the dealership. I did the pre-delivery service and I looked at it. It was made in Turkey. That was a concern. We're having a car that was made somewhere else. Maybe we're gonna have big problems. But to date, as of the fil date of filming this video, there's not really many common problems, if any, that I can remember. Not really. The CHR is actually a standout of reliability. I would put it up there with the 4Runner, with the FJ Cruiser, with the Land Cruiser even. 
there is absolutely no issues with the CHR for a strange transmission option and a strange engine that doesn't really isn't really shared with other models. It's a standout in reliability. There is absolutely no issues that I can think of with the CHR and that is where it's a hidden gem. The CHR has a character. It definitely does. It has many flaws as well but it does have a character. It's a good looking car in my opinion. I see the CHR make more sense for a younger buyer, a family without kids yet, or even a family with very young kids. It makes sense, it's a very good car because it's very reliable. It does have a little bit of a different look, kind of excites your emotions when you look at it, but it does not make a compromise on reliability. It is actually an absolute hidden gem when it comes to reliability. It is a simple car, not really hard to operate or confusing. Everything is laid out very simply, drives okay, will last you many, many years. And, and from experience, I see people who own CHRs, they actually love them. People who buy the CHR for the wrong reasons, they're gonna trade them in very fast because you're either, this is the kind of car where you're either gonna love it or really not love it. There is no in between with this car. And people who bought it for the right reasons, which are, this is a sensible car, this is a very reliable car that looks a little bit different, stands out, looks, the words I would use for how it looks is funky, cute, different. That's, th this is the clientele for the CHR. And the sales of the CHR have been a little bit on the rise. Surprisingly, it's selling better than when it first came out. Part with that have to do with the price, part of that have to do with the kind of the SUV crossover demand that we have these days. But in my opinion, part of it is because it is a fabulous car when it comes to reliability. And before we wrap up this video, and I'll, sh I'll share this with you, one more strange thing that I noticed, and it could be related to this specific CHR behind me. The Toyota logo on the windows on the driver's side, when you look at them from the outside, they're written correctly. And if you move to the passenger side, they're actually backwards. If you, if you look at them from the inside, they're correct, but they're backwards. Just one more strange thing with the CHR, embedded in the sea of strange things with the CHR. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.